<laughs> um, ooh, oh you. Hi everybody, I'm Jonathan Wagner, and tonight is a very special episode of the Dohyo. Tonight, for the last time, we celebrate Hakuho. He's the greatest Yokozuna of all time. Come and join the dojo and celebrate Haku Ho. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hope you're staying warm on this wintry February day. It's a very special day here at the dojo. We're not doing our normal episode. As you can see, we are here in the corner with the radiator, with my good friend, 69th Yokozuna Haku Hosho. Now, uh, it's taken me a little bit of time, a little bit of time to sort of ruminate on the career of Hakuho and get around to doing this episode. It's been a few months. He ended up retiring back in September. But as you all know, I strive to try to not post things unless I have something to say. So I needed a little bit of time to sort of ruminate uh, and, and sort of figure out what I had to add to the conversation about Hakuho's retirement that no one else would be bringing to the table. I mean, we all know the stats. By the stats, he is clearly the greatest wrestler of all time. Most you show, most wins in a year, most wins at Yokozuna, most years at Yokozuna, most consecutive years with the win. Uh, it's easier to list the records he doesn't have. So today will be less about that and more putting Hakuho into the correct sort of historical context. Uh, the historical context that allowed a figure like Hakuho to happen. We are also going to be looking at him in the context of other Rikishi and if he can truly be considered the greatest of all time. And of course, you know, I have some feelings about Hakuho's retirement that I will be sharing with you, likely via some very obtuse metaphor about sports and or musical theater. Uh, this is my Hakuho Tagata. I ended up, oddly enough, uh, purchasing it right before Hakuho won his final tournament and receiving it right after Hakuho won his final tournament. So, sort of the journey of Hakuho's final tournament was the journey of his Tagata into my arms. Celebrate Hakuho! Now, one of the things I have grown to notice about sports uh, over history is that records tend to be broken when we are at times that are favorable to that record being broken. We see this happening all over modern sports. We see all the home run records like falling in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Why? Because uh, smaller ballparks, a lot of expansion level pitching, and a lot of substances that weren't necessarily meant to be put into humans at that velocity. Since the defensive rules in football have changed, passing yardage records have gone completely insane in the last 10, 20 years. And in the NBA, uh, just look at the amount of three-pointers taken from like the 1990s until now. The numbers are way higher now than they used to be. Obviously, sports change over time. Now, Sumo tries very, very hard not to, but that still doesn't mean that they are immune from this. Now, of course, the case for Hakaho being the greatest ricochet of all time lies largely in his statistics. Now, there are a few names you can sort of throw out as the Mount Rushmore of sumo, but they were not contemporaries. Because if they were contemporaries, it would be very obvious who the alpha dog was. So when we've had alpha dogs in sumo, before Hakuho, they topped out at around, like, high 20s, low 30s. People like Chiyo Nafuji and Taiho, they're up in the 30s, high 20s, Kita no Umi. What is it? What are these extraneous, exogenous circumstances that pushed him from someone who might win 30 basho to someone who won 45? Celebrate Hakuho! Hakuho was born the son of a championship wrestler. So right off the bat, Hakuho grows up in a family where he is likely to be surrounded by wrestling. The idea of being fit, physical excellence being a thing that is very important in the family. This leads into the fact that he was born in Mongolia, a country where the national sport is wrestling. So not only is his dad one of the best of all time at it, but it's the national sport. So whenever he leaves the house, it's not like he's going to be getting away from wrestling. Radiator. Mm, the music of the night. Now, Hakuho didn't train in Mongolian wrestling like his father. Actually, he was very much into basketball at the time. But he ended up finding his way into an interest into sumo wrestling. 
So in the year 2000, Hakuho at age 15 goes to Japan at the invitation of sumo wrestler Mongolian Kyoku Shuzan. And no one really wanted to pick up this guy. Hakuho was so small and skinny that it's difficult to understand because we just all see him as this giant champion. But he was tiny. He was like 135 pounds. But Kyoku Shuzan ended up talking to... Miyagi no Oyakata, his friend, and said, hey, would you take a chance on this kid? He agreed. And by the next tournament, young Hakuho had joined Sumo. Then Hakuho became the pet project of who later became Miyagi no Oyakata, who was the Magashira Chikobayama, who was a smaller Ishiura type wrestler. And because Hakuho was smaller, he trained him to wrestle small with small limbs and a small body. Then Hakuho ends up hitting this perfect growth spurt growing to what we now sort of figured out is the ideal shape for a sumo wrestler. Long, but not too long legs. Long, but not too long arms. So you are able to go from pushing sumo to belt sumo to throwing sumo with equal ease. He became a larger man with this huge body and this will to survive and succeed mixed with the technique of a much smaller person. Which makes sense. If you look at the recruits of the Miyagi no Beya, some of them have tended to be on the more petite side. And who and Ishiura? So Hakuho now grows to the perfect size. He ends up taking the Makauchi division by storm right at the time when another Mongolian is reinventing sumo. The amount of Kimarite changed, it almost doubled from before when the Mongolians took over Sumo to after. They just didn't have vocabulary for the techniques the Mongolians were using, so they had to expand the Kimarite set. So Hakuho, a naturally gifted wrestler, gets to work on his technique without the pressure of sort of trying to be the best in the business right away, because we have a young Yokozuna who's sort of sucking all the media energy out of the room. Now, a lot of knowledgeable people think Asa Shoryu is one of the best sumo wrestlers of all time, and I agree with them. So, the availability of having an alpha dog like that in his prime, facing Hakuho in his formative years, must have pushed his development even farther, forcing Hakuho to come up with an even another gear to be able to dominate this other wrestler, who is even better than anyone he has ever faced before. Then, Asa Shoryu kicked out of sumo. Hakuho, now the sole Yokozuna, and sort of confronted with a bunch of aging Ozeki. And this started a run of 12 years of pretty much uninterrupted dominance. Now we had other Yokozuna, Kisano Sato, Haruma Fuji, Kakuryu, but none of them were the equal of Hakuho, and no one was ever presented as such. Now there's like a, a four Basho section where you might be able to argue for Haruma Fuji as the better wrestler, but in those 12 years, there were no serious contenders to Alpha Dog opposite Hakuho. So Hakuho just kept winning three, four, five tournaments a year for over a decade. Hakuho also gets the added benefit of being in a modern sports setting with modern sports equipment and modern sports surgeries. Ligament damage doesn't have to be a career ender anymore, as we now know from the Tommy John surgery. And also, very interesting X factor, Kisano Sato's retirement about a year and a half before Hakuho's retirement. Now, Kisano Sato, as we all know, set the record for consecutive Kyujo by Yokozuna with eight before he ended up eventually retiring. Now this happened right before Hakuho started going Kyujo. It was right before, so like the YDC and the JSA couldn't exactly be like, well, you have to come out and wrestle, even though we didn't hold the Japanese Yokozuna to that standard. So that gave him a little bit more wiggle room than he might've had, say, four years previous. Uh, and there's one more X factor that's not specific to Hakuho, but more global to sumo. That if the result that you want is more Japanese champions of sumo, then you need to have more than one foreigner allowed in a stable. This feels counterintuitive, but follow me. If the rules are basically, if you're a Japanese male who's of height, weight, and age, you can just show up to a sumo stable and some of them will take you. But if you are not Japanese and you are trying to join organized sumo, you have to jump through so many hoops. This narrows the pool of applicants. Then, once you are a person who gets here, gets into a stable, no accommodations are made for foreigners in Japanese stables. So you have to learn Japanese sort of on the fly, well enough to be able to communicate with the people who are teaching you. <laughs> Again, this is a thing that is going to weed out the people who are not serious about it and not incredibly mentally tough, because they have to come into a situation with a language barrier and a culture barrier. 
And also they're in a situation where they're getting beat up a lot in the place where they live, which can't be that comfortable or not stressful. So it makes absolute sense that the absolute best of the best wrestlers come from the ranks of these people who were toughened up by these external cultural factors their entire careers in sumo. They've had to overcome so much adversity to get where they are. Once they get into the ring on a level playing field, they tend to have a bit of an advantage. Anyway, this is just one of my theories. Let me know what you think in the comments. Celebrate Haku Ho! Hmm. Now, a lot of you have asked me where I come down on the question. Is Haku Ho the greatest of all time or just the greatest of his era? Because it's sort of difficult to figure out between eras who was actually the best. Now, the argument against Hakuho being the best is that the level of competition was not nearly as high as it was for other Yokozuna. But of course, then you can easily make the converse argument, Hakuho won all those other tournaments because he was that much better than the other Yokozuna. Unfortunately, in head-to-head -head competitive sports, you can only defeat the people who are in front of you. You can only be judged against the competition you actually faced. There is a very valid case to say we should not necessarily follow the stats or the championships on this. Now, if you're looking at NBA basketball, if you're going by championships, the best of all time is a guy named Bill Russell. And if you're looking at just sort of uh, points scored and just raw stats, then the greatest of all time, if you're talking like on a season by season basis, is a guy named Will Chamberlain. But if you're talking about a career, the best of all time is a guy named Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. However, if you were to ask most knowledgeable uh, NBA type writers, they would tell you the best player of all time was LeBron James or Michael Jordan, supported neither by total championships or total stats. I personally think the sumo analogy has to be closer to baseball. Now Babe Ruth, considered the greatest player in baseball history, brilliant hitter and pitcher, with which a lot of people forget, ended up winning titles with the Red Sox and the Yankees, which a lot of people forget he won with the Red Sox. He revolutionized the game. He created the idea of a slugger. He out-homered entire teams. But he also never had to face an opponent of color. He never had to face a slider or a split finger fastball. He never had to travel to the West Coast for games. Whereas if you look at Barry Bonds, who had modern medicine and modern pharmaceuticals to help his game, he did have to go to the West of the East Coast for games, but he got to fly on the way there. But when he got there, he had to face the best players in the world, the best players from Latin America, Europe, Japan, Korea. They're all coming to America and playing there right at this time. So the level of play in the major leagues is much higher than it has been at any other time in the past. I think that wrestlers like Taiho and Futabayama have to be judged at a different level of competition than Hakuho. Now, Hakuho, of course, has the advantages of like modern travel, modern accommodations, modern training methods, modern sports medicine, as we said. That's all great. But he also has to face wrestlers from all over the globe. I mean, Chiyo Nafuji wrestled at a time where there were very few Mongolians. Uh, like I was talking about with Asashoryu, the big Kimarate expansion had not happened yet. The rise of like kaiju sized sumo wrestlers didn't really come into play until the very, very end of Chiyo Nafuji's reign, like with Konishiki and the Hawaiians. And Hakuho, of course, he has to face all of the best wrestlers of the modern era. All of the collective wisdom of sumo up until now can benefit the current generation, whereas we have a few generations before who didn't have the current wisdom. I know, current wisdom and sumo in the same sentence. So yes, I guess trying to compare the Yokozuna through history would be like uh, comparing Futabayama to Chiyana Fuji to Hakuho. You may as well be trying to compare Babe Ruth to Willie Mays to Barry Bonds. Different time, different competition, reasonably similar outcomes. But in the case of sumo wrestling, I still say the numbers are too great. Hakuho is the best. Celebrate Hakuho. It's getting late here on this chilly, chilly February night. Uh, now, as we try to wrap this up, I've been trying to come up with some sort of like cultural analog I can tie Haku home to. And obviously, my mind goes to sports figures. You can always compare Haku to Michael Jordan, because Michael Jordan's just an easy analog, say, ah, the best of the best. But that doesn't really work because Jordan played in a team game. That's why, like, Tom Brady doesn't really work for Haku. You could look at a sportsman like Jack Nicholas, a guy who you thought, ah, maybe he's out of it, but then came back later in his career and ended up dominating well past what most people thought his shelf life should be. Then you can also think of Muhammad Ali, 
in that he has three definite chunks to his career. Ali did, uh, the young fighter still fighting under the name Cassius Clay. Then his first championships, then his title strip when he uh, decided not to go to the Vietnam War when drafted. Then coming back to win his championship back. Hako has a sort of a similar thing where he sort of came up under the shadow of Asashoryu, then came into this beautiful, like, long, sort of like Pax Haku Ho, where he was the elf dog for over a decade, and then to this final act where he sort of turned into this uh, uh, scrappy, injured, almost underdog like figure in his later years. I mean, for me, the most beautiful thing about his last match against Terra Nafuji is that it was the only match I've ever seen Haku Ho enter where it looked like he thought he was going to lose when he entered that ring. But oddly enough, I think the cultural analog that I'm going to go with is Stephen Sondheim. If you don't know who Stephen Sondheim is, Google the man. Uh, if you've ever seen a musical, he was likely a part of it in some way. Uh, he was sort of the last link to Broadway's Golden Age. He had worked on shows from uh, West Side Story, uh, and Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, and Gypsy back in the early 60s. He also ended up, of course, writing brilliant shows up and through my lifetime shows uh, like Into the Woods and Assassins, uh, shows that I find just a very, very near and dear to my heart as some of the greatest ever created. Now for both Hakuho and Sondheim, um, I sort of came in a little late. Uh, I was not the first person to discover Sondheim's greatness, nor was I the first person to discover Hakuho, nor will I be the last for either of these gentlemen. Uh, I found them both when I was old enough to understand that what I was seeing was true greatness and something that should be treasured and remembered. So Hakuho, I am always going to remember you. You were my first alpha dog in sumo and pretty likely the greatest I or any of you will ever see. Thank you so much for all of the memories. Thanks for joining us on this very special episode of the Dohyo. Like, subscribe, stay tuned for all the amazing episodes we've got coming up before the next Basho. Stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time on the Dohyo.